Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you how to make a quick, easy, no need sourdough bread that looks store bought. My mother got this recipe from her mother, which places this recipe over 100 years old. My mother thought she lost this recipe and found it eight months ago. I have been making this recipe weekly since then. First, we must make the starter, and unfortunately, the recipe my mother had did not show us how to do this. So after some trial and error, and of course research, I found what I thought was a close substitution to get the starter going. First, we are going to find a container that has a loose fitting lid. I had this large jar laying around my house that I used during my wedding reception, and I highly recommend a jar like this. I will post the link to this type of jar below. If you do not have this type of jar, then any glass container will work. Just make sure that the starter can breathe. Glass is also recommended as metal can leak or affect the starter. I already have starter made, so I'm just going to show you the steps that I took. Here I used a mason jar since I have no other glass containers on hand. If this was my only option, I would just wrap a thin cloth around the top and secure it with a rubber band. We are just going to start off by placing seven and a half teaspoons of yeast or three packages of yeast from the store. Next, we will add one cup of warm water around 110 degrees Fahrenheit into the jar. I have made this recipe a lot, so now I can tell the correct temperature just by touching the water. But I do recommend a thermometer as extreme heat or cold could kill your starter. You want to place the mixture into the refrigerator for three and a half days and then take it out and feed the starter again or make the bread which we will do here. The older your starter is the better your bread will taste. I will post how to make the starter at the bottom of this video since the original recipe does not include this step. After your starter is made and had aged some it is time to make the perfect bread. My starter here is about eight months old. You must feed your starter once a week to keep it alive. Sourdough has microorganisms that produce that amazing taste and they will die from starvation. To feed the starter, we're going to start off with one cup of warm water, around 110 degrees Fahrenheit again. Into the glass measuring cup, I also added three tablespoons of dehydrated potatoes and three quarter cups of sugar. Just stir the slurry until it's well combined and add it to your original starter mix. This recipe can be time consuming as it takes about three days from start to finish, but has very little prep work. I have been struggling to make sourdough for years now, until my mother finally found this old recipe in her cabinet. This recipe comes out perfect every time. Our house has a lot of moisture since we live literally next door to some wetlands, and most of the breads I made hated this. They would never rise and just die on me. Even the basic of recipes I used were a struggle. This recipe is so easy that I never had any of these issues with this bread. Now we just find a warm place in your house, around 73 degrees, and let the mixture sit out for 8 to 12 hours. If your mixture is alive and doing well, then you will see these little air bubbles pop up. This is a sign that the microbes are eating and doing their thing. I love to just sit and watch this, as sometimes they will puff up into a mini explosion. I tried catching it on camera, but it was too subtle for the camera to really see it. I have been trying to make bread from scratch without a bread machine for several years, and I've struggled. I just do not have that natural talent for making bread. But I kept trying and I figured it out. Now my family raves about my amazing sourdough. Once your mixture has sat for 8 to 12 hours, it is time to make the dough. I usually feed my starter around 9 a.m. and make the dough around 8 p.m. when my daughter goes to bed. To make the dough, you will add quarter cup of sugar into a large mixing bowl and pour in half a cup of oil. I usually use canola oil for this bread recipe. Next, we'll add one tablespoon of salt into the bowl. Then we will add one and a half cups of warm water around 110 degrees Fahrenheit again. Next, we will add six cups of flour. Our final ingredient is to add one cup of starter into the dough. Now you just want to mix the dough until it is well combined. There will be small pieces that do not incorporate well, and that is okay. You just want to mix it as well as you can here. I never spend more than three minutes stirring this dough and most of the time it is barely mixed together. I am lazy and I hate eating bread, so I never need this recipe. If you watch any of my videos, you would see that I tend to take the quicker routes on things. I am big on time management and I don't have time for kneading. Now we just put the lid on the container and let it sit on the counter for 8-12 to 12 hours. 
I just let this sit overnight in my house. So when I wake up first thing in the morning, I start the next step. I went ahead and poured out some of my starter here that I had in the container as it was getting too full. I try to keep it between one and a half cups to three cups. The more starter you have in your container, the quicker they eat the starter feed. If they eat it too fast, they will end up starving and dying after a few hours, and you just don't want that. So I try to limit how much starter I have in my containers. It is now the next day after the dough has sat on the counter overnight. This dough is made to make three loaves at one time. I hate splitting up the dough to make three loaves. I would rather have one larger loaf, so I found this amazing metal pan on Amazon that will fit this recipe perfectly, and it comes out looking like store-bought bread every time. You just want to grease whichever pan you will be baking your bread in. Next, you want to take a minute or two and mix your dough again to make sure that there are no dry spots and just pour it into your pan. Sometimes I mix longer and other times I just dump it straight in the pan, depending on how tired or lazy I am. If you're using typical bread pans, then you will just split this dough two to three times depending on your bread pan size. This dough will sit on the counter again for eight to 12 hours. I start this at 9 a.m. and bake it after my daughter goes to bed at 8 p.m. After another 12 hours, the dough has almost risen to the top and we can finally bake the bread. You do not want it much higher than this or it will overflow. If that happens, then it is okay. I have done that a few times when I totally forgot I was supposed to bake the bread and I went to bed. The dough will rise some more once it goes into the oven, so keep that in mind. Now we just place the pan into a 350 degree preheated oven for 55 minutes. If you are using this pan, if you're using a smaller pan, then the recipe calls for 30 minutes. I will post the original recipe at the very end. You want to remove your bread immediately from the bread pan as the bread will sweat and go soft if it is left in the pan to cool. I just place the bread on a wire rack and allow it to cool for a few hours. Now here is my perfect bread. This shape is so much easier to slice and make sandwiches, plus it fits in the toaster perfectly, and I also have this nifty plastic container that holds it like a glove. I will post the bread pan I baked the bread in along with the storage container down below. I got both of them off of Amazon and they are worth the purchase if you want a loaf that is easier to manage than a bread machine loaf. When I use my bread machine, I would always have to destroy the ends of the bread to get the attachment out. And the loaves were always so fat and it made sandwiches too large. Plus the taste of sourdough is far superior than any bread machine bread. This bread usually stays good for 5-7 to seven days, but my family tends to go through it fairly quickly as it is my toddler's favorite food. Here is my grandmother's original recipe. She claims she got this from her mother, so the age of this recipe is unknown to me. But since she is 90 years old and her mother had this recipe, I would say at least over 100 years old. This is truly a mix it and leave it type of bread recipe. It does take about three days to make, but the work to make this bread is very minimal. There is two pages of this recipe. The first page shows the steps of feeding the starter and making the bread. I did have to tweak my cook time for this recipe as my bread pan was larger and made the bread denser. The other measurements are the same. The second page just has some tips to improve on the bread. I hope your family enjoys it as much as we have. This recipe has become a weekly stable in our house and I will continue to make it until I no longer can. Thank you for joining me in the kitchen and I hope you give this recipe a try. It is life changing. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.